all set. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's session. Um, today's session is titled Playing Sports in College. And my name is Joanne Cruz from the Aruba Education, um, Education USA Aruba team. And um, joining us today is my colleague, Darlene Ponce from the Aruba team. And um, although our colleagues Thais Nirop and Kira Hooferts are not here, but we formed the Education USA Aruba team. On the panel today, we have invited uh, honorable guest, Ryan Luckett from NJCAA. Ryan is the president, uh, vice president of external affairs and development. And joining us as well is coach, tell me if I'm saying this right, um, Kiko Benoit, women's head volleyball coach at Miami-Dade College. In addition to um, our two experts today, we have two, uh, four student athletes, two playing baseball and two swimmers playing at the NAIA level and swimming or swam at the NCAA level. So we have a mix of all of the major sporting associations represented here today. Um, as I mentioned before, today's session is titled Playing Sports in College. If you're here, it's because you are aspiring or you're aiming to become a student athlete studying while studying in the US. And that's why we're here. We're basically here to inform international students as an Education USA Center in Aruba with actually 400 plus advising centers in the world. So Recently, in October 2020, our center opened here during the pandemic. However, it gave us ample time to prepare and make sure that we have the necessary structure in order to provide not only um, our Aruban students, but also regional students information about what it means to study and be successful in um, the USA. So whenever you engage with any education you would say advising center, you will go through five steps. First of all, you have to research your options. So where do I want to study? Um, what state is best for me? What type of programs does a specific college offer? Am I going to a community? Am I going to a four-year university? So this is basically the first step. Secondly, you'll have to look at financing your studies. How will I do this? Do I have financial aid available from my home country? Or will I look into scholarships that the colleges or the universities are offered, offering? Thirdly, you have to look at the application requirements for each of your lists of colleges. Remember, we're not going to only aim for one, but you ideally you do a list of colleges that you would like to attend and you, sorry, you start your application process. Or you then apply for your student visa once you have been accepted. And last, but certainly not least, we prepare for your departure. So basically doing a pre-departure orientation in order to provide all the information necessary once you arrive in the US. So basically Education USA's main objective is to inform and support and guide potential students, international students going to the USA. So as I mentioned, this session is directed specifically targeting student athletes or those wishing to pursue a student athlete career in the US. So either you're a student yourself or you're a parent or a coach that is um, also supporting these potential student athletes. So yes, you have talent, great. You know, we have a lot of sports um, that are being played, baseball, swimming, tennis, you name it and there's talent. If you think about it, it's not enough. Why? Because when you're pursuing your student athlete career, you have to adhere to specific academic requirements. It's never early to begin researching. So if you are starting now and you're in the ninth grade, then you're actually right on time to start looking for information. Remember, you're a student first. That's why it's called student athlete, because you have to perform in class in order for you to be able to play. And I'm sure our student athletes will share more about that 
um, commitment that is required both in class and on the field or in the pool. And thirdly, you have the athletic talent, you are, you're getting good grades, but you also have to be coachable. So Coach Kiko will hopefully share some of that information as to what he looks for in a, an athlete. And your academic grades impress coaches. They show that you're committed to your studies and to your sports. Basically, the coaches need their players and team members to graduate. And if anything, when you're showing your progression, it needs to be upward from grade nine until 12. So an introduction, brief introduction to the three major and largest sporting associations, um, which some of you may or may not be familiar with, is first of all, NCAA. And this is divided into Division I, Division II, and Division Three, with nearly 500,000 student athletes. And um, they do have scholarships available at the Division I and the Division II levels. And these are only for four-year universities. Secondly, we have NAIA, which is directed towards smaller schools, fewer sports. The entry requirements are, are less strict. And also they have scholarships available. Thirdly, which we will be hearing more about today, and thank you to Brian again for joining us on the panel and Coach Kiko in order to share more information of this different um, pathway that we're uh, less familiar with specifically in this um, region. They have varied competition. They must transfer to complete a bachelor's degree. There are scholarships available and it's primarily communities and junior colleges. So some of the academic um, um, requirement, requirements and eligibility requirements criteria, division one, GPA 2.3, division two, 2.2 a minimum of 14 to 16 core courses are as required by the NCAA. Your ACT and SAT because of the pandemic are excluded from NCAA initial eligibility. However, depending on the college or the school that you're applying to, they have their own entry requirements. So you have to be careful with that. Secondly, for the NEIA, the minimum GPA is a 2.0 or 4.0, depending on uh, the school that you're applying to. Minimum 18 on ACT and 860 on SAT. And you'll have to be in the top um, half graduate of your class. And lastly, the NJCAA, which we will be again hearing more about, it, you must be a high school graduate. There's no minimum passing SAT score and only 25% of scholarships can be given to international students, but we'll hear, we'll hear more about that um, soon. So you're probably asking yourself, for those of you that are still searching for the path, um, what's a community college and what's a four-year university? What are the main differences? Basically, a community college is a two-year program um, for an associate's degree and a four-year university and yes, it's four years for your bachelor's degree. Although community colleges, most of them do not offer a bachelor's degree, they do offer um, the ability to transfer. So it's called um, a two plus two program, which Education USA has had many seminars and sessions on finding out more about the two plus two offerings um, in the US, which makes it um, a plus actually. So if we look at this different pathway, because it's really dependent on what your overall plan is, why do we introduce this as an additional opportunity and option? It's basically, it's about one third of the costs. So first of all, you look at the costs and um, an estimate of the college board for 2019, 2020 was an average of 3,700 per year, as opposed to a uh, 10,000 for a four year public um, university. Secondly, they offer credits and guaranteed transfers. As I mentioned, the two plus two program. Thirdly, it's a better transition. It's a smoother transition for international students that have been going to schools in different languages. If we think about schools um, in the Latin American region, you don't necessarily go to schools in English, but in Spanish, in Aruba, we, do, we have a Dutch system 
and the transition is smoother for international students and they start then with a less rigorous um, study schedule. And finally, they have more flexible application requirements. So um, basically, this is the, the rationale that we want to introduce uh, a different and a new way of looking at community colleges. So um, that was it for me today, but I would like to now ask of you, where are you from and what sports do you play? So go to your um, Zoom, look at the screen in front of you and let us know exactly where you're from and what sports you play. So now we have the results in front of us and we do have 63% of us from Aruba, um, but we also have representation from other countries as well. And as for sports, the most popular sport here is baseball or softball um, and then other and also swim and dive. So that was our poll for the day. Um, Joanne, thank you for, for sharing that. And I'm gonna go ahead and give you the microphone. Thank you so much, Mo, for your um, your help on this. So yes, um, I'm glad that Aruba um, is represented. And basically, yes, we have the major sports are baseball. We have swimming, tennis as well. So thank you for your participation. And without further ado, I'm going to pass the word now to Brian Luckett from NJCAA. And Brian is the Vice President of External Affairs and Development. Uh, Mo, can you help us out in letting Brian share his screen? Or Brian, will you do that? Yes, Brian can share his screen. You can stop Excellent. sharing your screen and he will be able to share his. Excellent. Are you all able to see that? Yep. All right, well, I'll go ahead and get started. Well, thank you again for the opportunity to be here and it's a pleasure to talk to you all and um, I'll just say I'd much rather be in Aruba than rainy Charlotte, North Carolina right now. Um, but I do appreciate the opportunity to be here to talk a little bit about the National Junior College Athletic Association, also known as the NJCAA. Um, so as you can see here, um, our motto is opportunity start here. And as we talk here, I hope you guys will get a sense of why that is our motto and why it means so much to us. Um, so the NJCA was founded in 1938. We are the national governing body for all two-year college athletics. So just like Jan was talking about, the difference between community college, two-year colleges, and four-year colleges, NCAA, NAIA, they do four-year colleges. We're the only national organization uh, that governs college athletics for two-year college in the United States. Uh, we're the second largest intercollegiate athletic association in the country, only behind the NCAA. Yes, the NCAA is much larger in terms of having uh, many more colleges, but in terms, again, of two-year colleges, we're the only national association. As you can see here, on over 500 member colleges, we offer 28 sports, which that's actually increasing. Um, we have 24 regions across the country, and then in all of our sports, because we do have multiple divisions for most of our sports, we have 52 total national championships. And you can see there from uh, the map of the United States how we break up um, our, our regions across the country. So you'll see on the NCAA and NAI level, they have conferences. So you'll see the ACC or the SEC or the Big Ten. We have regions and we classify them by numbers. So if you were interested in going and, and playing with Coach Kiko in Florida, you'd be playing in Region 8. Um, and they play in the region and you have to qualify to be able to go to play the national championship. Um, but that just gives you a little idea of how we organize ourselves across the country. And again, a little bit of what the NJCA is like from an overall picture. 
So a lot of people look at it and they say, oh, well, that's two-year college. You're not the big time level like four-year. You're not, you know, you don't have the same type of level of competition. I would tell you that a lot of these people you're going to see here would disagree with you. There is a high level of competition that you see on the two-year college or junior college level, JUCO that you may hear it um, within our association. And here you have some of those people. A lot of, the, a lot of you are looking at baseball and softball. Well, how about Bryce Harper? How about Kirby Puckett, Albert Pujols, Andy Pettit, just to name a few. Um, we have a lot of professional talent that comes through the NJCAA. And that's really because with the NJCAA, it's different from the NCAA that you can go to one of our colleges for a year, be drafted and go pro. You don't have to stay like you do in the NCAA level. Um, so you do like Bryce Harper came and played NJCA for one year, drafted number one overall. Um, so there is that flexibility there if you are wanting to, to go pro or be part of a farm system. Again, you can be at the college for two years and transfer to a four-year level. You still have that opportunity. See, again, opportunity start here, whichever way you want to start and where you want to go from there. The NFL, we've got plenty of NFL talent that started with us. NBA, Jimmy Butler, now playing with the Miami Heat, started at Tyler Junior College in Texas uh, before he went uh, to Marquette on a scholarship and then went pro. Uh, WNBA, for you women's basketball players, Cheryl Swoops. Lady Jordan herself started at South Plains College in Texas before she went to Texas Tech to win a national title. Um, and then we actually have a whole nother page here. Again, you have uh, the softball talent, golf talent, Bubba Watson. He played, in, um, he played in Georgia at one of our colleges. And then we have a lot of track and field talent. Some of the people you see in the Olympics started at a junior college in the United States. Um, so there's a lot of talent that you see that even goes on uh, whether it's from our colleges to professional or our colleges to four-year and then professional, but it's a large level of talent, a uh, high level of talent that we have within our association. Um, just to talk about some of our championship events, our D1 Baseball World Series actually just wrapped up last week in Grand Junction, Colorado. It's been there since the 1950s. Um, we have eight to 10,000 people to come out to see every single game, and you can see a photo there of the pack stands that come out to see. Bryce Harper played in the same stadium, along with Kirby Puckett and a lot of the other great talent that we have. Um, Hutchinson, Kansas, D1 men's basketball. Again, it's actually been there since 1948. Um, a, a lot of people come out to watch junior college basketball to see that type of talent that's there. And our D1 men's basketball championship has been there ever since. And then, as I mentioned, 52 championships. Um, we, we've had them across the country. This past year, over 15 states hosted our championships. We also have our NJCA network, so we stream it live. And we actually have, with our international student athletes, we have a lot of their families and friends back home that watch them on the NJCA network when they make national championships. Um, it's funny, so Joanne, we actually are gonna have some of the same data here that you even talked about uh, briefly when, when you did. Um, but when you look at the NJCA and our community colleges, um, you get a wide range of representation from many different backgrounds, ethnicities, racial, socioeconomic backgrounds. You see it all in the community college to your college level. Um, so when you look at community college students, again, just talking about community college students, they make up 41% of all of the undergraduates in the United States. 39% of them are first time freshmen. And then you see here um, the, the minority uh, populations that are represented. Um, and these are all representative community college students among all undergraduates that are in the United States right now. And you can see here um, the different backgrounds that are served and um, are able to have an opportunity at the two-year college level. You also need to look at um, first generation to attend. 33% of all of the students that attend two-year colleges are first generation college students. First, one in, first ones in their family to go to college. 60% um, are graduating two-year college graduates with little to no debt at all. Obviously, it's something that's rising here in the United States, the cost of attendance, the cost of going to college. Um, and, and as Joanne talked about, that's much different when, when you look at the two-year college level. 37% of all community college students, they're from households earning $20,000 or less a year. 49% um, um, are, are earn a four-year degree after they attend the two-year college. So they still persist, go on to graduate. The other thing to remember is that there are a lot of two-year college students that uh, at their institutions, they may not be transferring to a four-year school, but they're earning some type of workforce credential. 
they're going straight to the workforce, then it only takes two years, depending on the program. Um, you see a lot of that with healthcare, with a lot of the healthcare jobs that are increasing. You see that a lot with different trade, industry and trade uh, type of, uh, jobs. Uh, the United States, there's a shortage of a lot of those. You can get that education in two years at a community college, have a job and be able to go to work. Um, and then there are 9%, this number is actually increasing, are non-US citizens uh, that attend two-year colleges in the US. Then you go to cost. Right now, we have more student athletes choosing to go to the NJCAA because of what you're looking at right here. When you look at the NCAA level, and we talk about Division I, Division II, and Division III, it's set up to where Division I, you can offer full scholarships, cost of attendance, the whole nine yards. Division two, you get more into the partial scholarships. And then division three, no athletic scholarships. It's, you can only be, they don't offer any scholarships based on your athletic abilities. It's all academic and institution-based. In JCAA, we're, that's the same with us. We have division one, division two, and division three for most of our sports. Coach Kiko knows we have that for volleyball. We have it for baseball, softball. Most of our sports have three divisions. And it's all based on the number of colleges we have competing in that sport. Um, but the same thing for us, division one, we offer full scholarships for colleges that wanna do that. Division two, partial, division three, no athletic scholarships. But again, look at it that even if you don't have a scholarship, it's significantly less to be able to attend a two-year college, a community college in the United States. It fluctuates based on state and it fluctuates based on if they have a different um, a different tuition for international or if they have anything like that. But you can see the numbers here in terms of comparisons overall, it's significantly less. So let's say again, you're maybe looking at to go to an NCAA division three. If you do that, you're gonna be paying your way or having whatever uh, aid that that college, that institution is giving you. If you had the same thing comparing apples to apples, you can play college athletics in the United States by going to the NJCAA playing one or two years, and you can still get recruited to go and play at the NCAA or the NAIA level. The NCAA and the NAIA, and again, I'll let Coach Kiko go more into this, heavily recruit the NJCAA because that's where they can get a lot of their next student athletes. They look at it as, I can get a student athlete that's already played a year or two. They've already played college athletics. I can get somebody that's not coming straight out of high school, somebody that's gonna be brand new to the college scene, somebody that maybe has to do a little bit more academically, they go and re they recruit college athletes that already have experience, that already have one or two years of education already done. And a lot of colleges, four-year colleges, look for that. And they look for that next talent that's coming from the two-year college level. So again, when you're just comparing all of your options, being able to look at if financially that's one of the big factors that's playing into it, to be able to know and have that opportunity of whether scholarship or no scholarship, it's significantly less to be able to play at a two-year college and still compete in college athletics. So again, thank you guys for the opportunity. Um, I'll be able to answer any questions anybody has any, but I wanted to make sure that I gave Coach Kiko uh, plenty of opportunity to be able to talk because he is one of the ones that's on the front lines. He's a great coach of ours. I know he'll probably introduce himself. He's also a national champion volleyball coach in the NJCAA. That's a great representative of uh, what we do every single day on the two-year college level and having great opportunities for student athletes here in the United States. Um, so again, thank you guys for the time and I'll turn the rest of my time over back to you all. Thank you so much, Brian, for your time and accepting our invitation, we're honored. Um, if you can, yes, stop sharing your screen. I'll share my screen now for Coach Kiko's presentation. Hello. Uh, Hi. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Coach. No, thank you very much for the invitation. It's an honor for me to be here. Mm -hmm. Joanne, Brian, and uh, Margaret, and all of you. Uh, actually, uh, I've, it's an honor once again for me to be here and share a little bit of what we do every day. Uh, now, um, I'm going to piggyback a little bit on Joanne and Brian when it comes to uh, the NJCAA athletics. Definitely coming to our junior college is personally, I think, is the best, especially for kids that are just coming from high school that they're not mature enough. 
by coming to a junior college, we're going to help them to move on to a four-year school. That's one of the one of the best thing about coming to a junior college. Those are going to be going to be. I'm going to talk about a little bit about exposure, academic requirement, competition, and and all that. Uh, so uh, now going to the economically side, like Brian says, you can come to a junior college and spend less money by taking exactly the same classes. Something that we had to remember that it doesn't matter if you go to a four year school or to a junior college, there are some classes that you still have to take regardless what you want to study, such as your English, uh, humanities, science, and it would be better for you guys or all the student athletes to come to a junior college, pay less, and at the same time, if you don't get in a scholarship, you can get recruited later on and go to a four-year school as an NIA school or Division I, NCAA, Division, Division II, NCAA as well. Now, uh, when it comes to uh, explore your uh, options, we know just coming out of high school, you don't know what you want to study. So if you go straight to a four-year school, you may be changing majors. And when you do that, you're going to be wasting money because now you have to take an up class that actually you didn't, you didn't need for that specific bachelor's that you, uh, that you were trying to study. So by going to a junior college, you had two years technically to decide. The first year you had to declare after the first year because obviously you are uh, requirements, you take it the first year and then your electives, you take it usually the second years, which actually electives are towards whatever major you want to study. So that's, that's the best part about, you know, about junior college when you don't know exactly what, uh, you don't, what, you don't, you know, what you want to do. And also, you know, to get more responsible. I know that uh, as a young kid, you want to do everything it's from high school and college. The transition is a little bit different because now you're not going to have your professor. Hey, remember, you have to do your homework. Now you're an adult, so you have to do it on your own. In junior college, you know, we, it's like a, it's a small system, smaller classes, it's more personal. And definitely that's gonna be very beneficial for student athletes, especially for international, but they have to come from another place. Most of them, they're here alone. They don't have a family, so it's less stress for them. So that's why, I mean, I definitely want all those internationals to come to a junior college and experience going to a, four, to a two year school and then later on transfer to a four year school. That, that, that's a great experience. Now, going to competition, that's something that I like to uh, emphasize a little bit. Uh, actually, my, uh, before going, doing that, I'm gonna go talk about academic, even though uh, you guys talk a little bit. Uh, in some junior colleges, you don't need to take any tests to get it. You don't need to take a TOEFL, so some of them you have to take a TOEFL, but they don't require it as much. Uh, and some of them, like Miami Day College, we have English as a second language. That means that if you don't speak English, when you get here, you take a test. And depend on the results, you can get placed on a English you know, level one, English level two, three, so on, depend on the colleges. Not all of us have uh, English as a second language, but a lot of schools here in the United States, junior colleges, we offer that option for those student athletes that are in, want to play, wants to get better, but they didn't get a chance to learn English in their country. So that's a great advantage that everyone should take from a junior college. Now, going to the competition level. In the past, people used to say, oh, don't go to a junior college because you know, that's a lower level institution. You're not gonna get better. Absolutely, that is not true. Brian showed you guys the, the shark, all those uh, professional student athletes that are went through a junior college, ended up going to a four-year school, and then they're play pro, uh, playing professional. I'm going to share a little bit something about one of my players. Uh, her name is Madeleine Montaño. When she came to this country, she didn't know English at all. She ended up playing for us, being player of the year twice, and she broke the world record, scoring 54 points playing professionally in Korea. So those are the type of players that we get. So that stigma no longer is available that we're not good. Yes, we can compete with a lot of Division I and a lot of NIA schools. 
So definitely when someone says, don't go to, my, don't go to a junior college because you're not going to get better. That is not true. And you can, you can ask them to call us, to call the national office, to call any junior college, and they're going to tell you the same thing. We prepare those kids, those student athletes, to move on to a four-year school. And I think we are doing a great job because they're doing great at the next level. So that's why, I mean, I want you guys to think about before you go somewhere else, think about junior college so you can experience both. A lot of my players say, oh, I wish I come back. I, I, I want to come back to junior college because the way we treat the student athletes. Now going uh, to exposure, it's pretty much about uh, being, back, being back in competition. A lot of student, uh, student athletes, they get scholarships, okay? But they may not like the school that are recruiting them. They qualify, they can go to D1, they can go to D2, they can go to NAIA, but if they don't like the school, a great option is coming to a junior college. Playing for one year, if they are a qualifier, or playing for two years, and then they can transfer to a four-year school. Coming to a junior college, you're gonna get a lot more exposure. You know, a lot of coaches are gonna be recruiting for junior college for different reasons. One of the main reasons is uh, because experience. Now you have one or two years, so you don't have to be sitting in a bench for one or two years before you play. Most of the junior college athletes, when they get recruited, they go automatically and they start playing at a division one, division two, or any or any school, any school level. So that's that's something to think to think about it. Should I go to a D1? Yes, that's great. It's a lot of D1 schools, a lot of D2, a lot of NAIAs. But please think about junior college. We are a great option, especially for all of you and people like people like you and people like me. Now we are international. Uh, when we came here, actually, in my case, I didn't know any English. I ended up graduating, which is awesome. So um, I attended Miami Day. That was my first um, uh, higher level institution. And then I ended up going to FIU and Columbia College. And believe me, I had a great experience in all three of them. But uh, I will not change a junior college because the fa fa uh, we are like a family. We're small. We don't treat student athletes or student in general as a number, but just as a, as a real person. It's great to take a, a class with 20 or 28 students than 158. So that's more personal. And, and, and that's the beauty about junior college. To end this real quick, I, don't, I know I don't have a lot of time. <laughs> I like to talk. Um, Personally, when I'm recruiting student athletes, I recruit people. I know that it's important the way you play because yes, you're coming here because uh, you have a great, uh, uh, you're a great athlete in whatever sport, in my case, volleyball. But also I look at people because it doesn't matter if you're good, but if you don't do well academically, if you don't work hard, then I will not bring anyone like that. So it's very important to understand that even though you're getting the scholarship uh, because of your abilities, sport abilities, we have to remember that academic, academic comes first because if you do well academically, great. You still have your scholarship. If you do bad when it comes to sport, awesome. You still have your scholarship according, depends on the coach. But if you, do, if you don't do well academically, you become ineligible. So you won't be able to play. So you will lose your scholarship. That's something that you have to keep in mind that yes, playing is great. Yes, being an athlete is great. But first is being, in, uh, being a student. That's why we call it student athlete. So that's something that we have to, to remember. Uh, always, always having a positive attitude, always working hard, being a team player. I know if you guys have any, something else real quick, probably Brian, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Joanne, uh, in one of, when you were talking about junior college and uh, scholarship, you say 25% for international. I think it can be now 100%. Okay, that's Brian? great. That's great news, coach. That's great news. Yes, Brian, I don't know if you, if you uh, can correct me, but uh, now you can offer scholarship. Actually, in my roster, uh, out of 14, uh, 10 are international. So, I'm not aware uh, of a 25% cap as well. Yeah. I'm sorry? I said I'm not aware of the 20, a 25% cap. So 
correct? No, nah, definitely not. So it's, it's more opportunity that we're getting now in a junior college for international students. So uh, you're more than welcome, all of you to call me, send me an email, uh, any questions that you guys have, uh, please uh, feel free to do so. And once again, thank you very much for this invitation. Thank you, Coach Kiko, for your um, wonderful presentation and the great news that you're sharing with um, us today. I'm sure a lot of students um, are looking forward to, to that good news and especially the financial aid um, that is being offered. Thank you so much again. Um, gracias. And now without, gracias a usted. Without further ado, we will now hear from our students. Um, we will first start with a Naruban student his name is John Eichel, and he plays at the NEIA level baseball, or he played because he recently graduated. But um, John Eichel, you tell your story and your experience. Hello, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Um, okay, my name is John Eichel Acosta, John Eichel Acosta here in Aruba, they call me John Eichel in the state, they just call me John, John Eichel. Um, yes, I started my, my, um, my year at JUCO, that's the junior college at Oklahoma, that is in Connor State College. My experience over there, it was just one year because at Tramford, they offered me for a four year after the first year. So I take advantage and goes over there, but I have, I have a lot of fun in the Juco College. Um, I do play baseball. I just graduated this spring. It was a wonderful experience and journey, what I can tell you. So dedication is the key. Be responsible and always stay humble. Listen to your coach, be coachable, and do your thing in the classroom. Because if you don't, get your GPA, you do not play. Um, in the NEIA level, I did draft my first, year, uh, my first year. So my sophomore year till now, I, um, you have to get the GPA 2.0 and above to, um, to can play. And you have to be eligible 12 credits and up. If you miss one class, if you fail one class, you're not able to play. And that's a responsible as well as a coach because they will push you, they will motivate you. They cannot like tell you no to go to the class. It's a priority. So let me tell you about a day, a plan from me. Like, okay, let's start on Monday. I just wake up at, at five, I go to the gym. So at seven, I finish at seven, go to breakfast. Take a quick shower. After that, be um, be off of my um, class schedule. Back then, I went to the class nine to eleven. It depends. So after that, take a quick lunch. Go to practice at one. After that practice, till the sun goes down, <laughs> till six. After that, make sure you do your homeworks. You have to plan. Be responsible in your class as well. It's not only the, the talent, but it's, it's like, it's a balance between both of them. So in the baseball or be a swimmer or soccer, anything. So if you have class in the middle of the practice, you just told coach, they will let you go. They have to let you go to the class because it's a priority. It's a, it's a must, you have to just pass the classes so he can have you on the team. Because talent is everywhere, but you have to put, um, you have to encourage your teammates as well. Yo, go to class, yo, we have to win this and that. So be a leader, be a leader so they can tell you and like look you as an example. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing your experience, uh, John Eichel, you know, or Ruben, John Eichel, that, that's what we'll call you. But um, thank you so much. Um, now I will pass the word to Anai and um, after that, Michael Schroeders, their brother and sister and their swimmers at the NCAA level. So Anai, without, you can introduce yourself. 
Hi, my name is Anna Isreders, and I am currently a junior at the University of Indianapolis. Um, I compete at the NCAA Division II level, and with my experience in college, I have the opportunity to both compete in swimming, but also have a degree. So my major is exercise science with a concentration in pre-physical therapy. And for my experience in college, um, it's very helpful to have people who help you because we have both sports and academic. And it's very important to keep your grades up academically and also um, perform well in swimming. In college, in my school, we have academic advisors, which they help you. And as a student athlete, they help you to, um, they help you register for classes, make sure that you have the right classes so you can graduate in time and make sure you're taking the right courses to able to graduate. But also um, it's very important because school is always a priority. So it's important to keep your GPA up. And um, also it's very important to keep a schedule because you'll be very busy with practice and going to classes. So it's very, it's a very disciplined and scheduled as you have to make sure you have enough time to do your homework, but also go to practice and manage everything at the same time. Um, one of my best experiences that I have experienced in college swimming wise is that I have participated at the NCAA Division II champions, championships. And here I was able to swim two relays where we got fourth place. And as a team, we got third place, which was first time ever that our school has placed in the top 10. But also academically, I have achieved four times the Dean's list and also on the honor roll. And some tips that I have is to keep asking people for help if you need help when you're in school, as it can be very hard when you, when you have meets and you have to travel and you have to keep up with school, you can always ask your, your classmate or your teammate if you need help with school, because it's always important that if you go to a swim meet to keep up with school and also to stay focused, disciplined and keep going for your goal. Thank you. Thank you, Anai. Um, great tips and experiences shared as a student. And now, um, Michael, you can um, share your experience. Yeah, so my name is Mikael Schroeders. I'm her brother. Um, I think one thing that is important when I was when I finished uh, school here in Aruba, um, I was very quick into choosing the first school that I got a scholarship at. But I think you have to remember um, if you already know what you're planning on studying, you have to remember to always make sure that whatever school you go to, they have all the um, requirements to fulfill your degree. Um, I know it's very easy once you hear that you're getting a full ride that you say yes immediately, but remember, you also have needs for yourself. For example, if you don't like the cold, don't go to a school in Michigan, but stay in Florida or in Texas or something. Uh, but also remember when you are a student athlete, it's important that you also keep track of your studies, right? Because for me, um, I had to do my studies in five years um, because the first year I was yeah, young and I was like, you know, I'm only gonna be focused on swimming and I took the easiest classes to keep my easiest schedule and it ended up biting me in the butt in the end. So. Yeah, just make sure that if you know what classes you can take and you can always plan around it. So if you know in the spring there's the same class, but not during practice time, you can always take it then. But you just have to make sure that you schedule your, yeah, your future ahead the same as you do for your swimming. Because swimming, at least in my case, was the coaches did everything for us, but academically we also had to work to... Um, yeah, be able to graduate in time. 
Thank you. Thank you, Michael. That that was um, yes, yeah, that's indeed eye opening um, because you you know you you're you're relatively young and a lot of our students finish um, early on 18, 19. So moving from living with the family to um, an international experience. Thank you so much. And last but certainly not least, we have Joshua Simon. Um, Joshua, you can share your experience. Hi, everybody. Um, Joshua Simon. Um, came from Aruba. I'm currently playing baseball at Missouri Valley College, which is an NAIA school. Um, I'm going to keep it short and simple. I would say one of the best tips I can give you um, while attending school is be responsible. Of course, you can have your fun in certain times, but when it comes to uh, when it comes to maintaining your grades, that's really important to remain eligible mm -hmm. and helping your team win ball games or having, helping your team win competitions and stuff like that. Um, I started off at a, a junior college in Oklahoma. I got a scholarship offer over there with um, another fellow Ruben. His name is uh, John Michael Holly. We played there for a whole year, but I, unfortunately I could not finish my, um, I could not um, finish my associate's degree because of uh, some troubles I faced at home. So I had to go back home and then I transferred to another junior college, which is called State Fair Community College, um, which is in Missouri as well. And due to COVID and not having enough playing time, I was unable to receive a, another athletic scholarship for the following year. So um, I got a I got an offer from Missouri Valley, and it's a really affordable school. Um, it's really nice there. You meet a lot of new people, people from all over the world. And I would say one of my best experiences at the college so far is forming, forming friendships with new people. Um, that's honestly the best experience, having a great environment um, with, with the team and just going after it day by day and getting better every day. Um, another tip I would like to add is uh, make sure you know what you're what you want to do once you get to college and um, what type of classes you're going to be taking. Cause as Mikhail said too, like taking easier classes is only going to slow it down for you because if you knock out the hard ones at first, it will be easier um, along the road for you to graduate on time. Um, I should be graduating by next year, December and hopefully bring my, uh, my usefulness back home to Aruba and help out the people in need when I get back home. Well, that's about it. That's pretty much all I have to say. I uh, appreciate your attention and thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us, Joshua, um, and sharing your experience as a student athlete. Um, and now we're going to <clears throat> open the floor up for questions for any of our um, six guests here today, um, and myself, of course, included. But basically, <clears throat> you can send your questions via Facebook or via Zoom session, so the Zoom chat. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them in now and our panel are going to be happy enough to answer them. I see here one question um, from someone on Zoom. What is the best way to communicate with college coaches? And I think this is a question for Kiko? Yeah. Hi. The best way is uh, email. As a student athlete, uh, you need to do your homework and target the school that you want to go to and send an email to those coaches. And uh, if, as an athlete, you can include there as well a video of whatever sport that you're playing. OK. OK. Um, and here's another question. Is there an age limit to play sports in college? Uh, no, we do have some regulations about uh, being professional, but uh, it's, we don't have an age limit. Okay. Let's see if there are I would any add to that too is that um, it's more on your eligibility clock, not as much as your age, it's more of the fact of how many years did you use eligibility to play 
college athletics, if that helps with the question. Okay. Um, if you want to ask your question in Spanish or in Papiamento for that matter, please do so. Put it in the chat and we'll um, translate for you. So don't um, be afraid to ask questions. <clears throat> Oh, this is a, <clears throat> oh, this is an interesting question. Are transfers from community colleges to four-year universities guaranteed? Uh, it's not guaranteed. Obviously, they had to do well academically and perform as an athlete. And uh, but most of them, yes, they get a scholarship or uh, they transfer and play to a four-year school. But uh, if you think that uh, you're gonna get one and you don't wanna work hard, it's gonna be tough. So you have to work for it, nothing is free. <laughs> okay, um, thank you, coach. Uh, what is the best way to approach recruiters? Facebook question. I'm not sure if that's a, a Brian or a coach Kiko question what was the question again i'm sorry what is the best way to approach recruiters uh definitely i mean like i say i mean if you, you can if you can talk to uh uh face to face uh, would be great uh email social media nowadays that we use that a lot and there is not like a proper way to do it, it you just have to approach you know the recruiter and, and talk to them based on your need and talk to them Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I would add to that too. Uh, do your homework. If somebody messages you and says, Hey, I can get you in to play in the United States. And, you know, I know all these co colleges and I know all these coaches and always do your homework. And as co coach Kiko said, if you put in the work and you read the coaches and you look up the colleges and you do that, um, always do your homework to double check and look um, just because somebody tells you that they can get you in the United States and play and they know all these coaches and everything, you can reach out to the coaches yourself. Um, and that's work that you're able to do. Um, and and to, to just be careful of um, doing your homework and, and making sure you know what you're, you're looking at. Yes, we've, we've all heard the horror stories. Um, Would it be okay if I add something to uh, his statement just now? Yes. Yes, of course. Um, like you said, like you gotta be careful because um most of these people, um, they said that for a certain amount of price, they can get you to a school, wherever school you want to go, and then you might never hear from them again after you pay them. So, like he said, just do your own homework. Um, look up the coaches. It might take them a few days to respond because they're busy people, but just be consistent. And, um, yeah, like I said, be cautious of uh, people who approach you and trying to tell you that they can get you into colleges, colleges in, in America. That's all. Yeah. Okay, thank and, you. And uh, also, uh, I mean, that's up to whoever. If you guys want to do the job and work for it, you're going to do exactly the same thing as a recruiter. So okay. if you want to, it's easy nowadays, just contact different schools or whatever school you want to go and just target those particular schools uh, and to agree with all my uh, uh, all of you guys, yes, you have to be very careful. Uh, they have some good ones, they have some bad ones, but that's up to the student athletes. Us as a coaches, you know, we receive emails every day from different people. And as a matter of fact, I get I would say eighty percent of my student athletes that are that are playing for us, they didn't use a recruiting service. I'm not saying that it's good. I'm not saying that it's bad. But uh, that's depending on the amount of work that you want to put into it. Okay, thank you. That's that's clear. Um, we have another question here for international students. How is housing arranged? Oh, Brian, my bad. So for two-year colleges, um, it depends on if that two-year college offers residential on-campus dorms. Um, and that depends, that, that varies based on state a lot of time. Uh, some states have different rules where having dorms or not having dorms. Um, but 
colleges do at least look at, um, you know, if, if they don't have dorms, at least pointing you in the right direction of a lot of students either stay here or they try to make sure they can get their student athletes together. Kiko, I don't know if you have anything to add to that, but it does depend on the college if they have on-campus housing um, or not. Yeah, in our case, we don't have on-campus, but what we do, we rent apartments near the school uh, with, you know, that's part of their scholarship. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question. The athletes, uh, the student athlete needs to contact a specific coach or the NCAA, NIA, or NJCAA at the same time as the university or before. So how, did, how is the process? Um, who do they contact first? Uh, definitely they're going to have to contact the coach uh, because uh, they don't know if they're going to be recruited or not. So the coach is the first point. And, uh, but also they have to realize that depending if they want to go to Division I, Division II, or junior college, if they are eligible to go to those schools. But the coach will be the first contact. I know that a lot of international uh, student athletes, they don't, they don't know much about rules and regulations. So by calling the coach directly, I think they can find out more about it. Okay, yes. And a coach you. will always lead you on the right process as well. The coaches are there if they want to recruit you and they want you to play there. They're going to look after you to make sure that you do what's, what's needed um, in order to, uh, you know, to enroll. And just as you've learned today, a lot of this information, whether it's NCAA, NAI, or NJCAA, you can also find that information on each of these, the, the association's websites about what you need to do to be eligible. But as Coach Kiko said, um, the coaches are going to guide you, and they're always a great first resource if you're interested and it's a good fit for you to get started. Excellent. Thank you. Um, another question. What is the lowest age that you can enter a junior college? So is there like an age minimum or? Uh, it's not an age minimum. You have to have a high school diploma. Okay, clear. Um, how do you evaluate a student's ability in a sport? So as a coach, I think this is again a, a coach Kiko question. How do I evaluate the students? Definitely the skills, because uh, you want to compete. And like uh, I said before, uh, I don't look only at the athlete, I look at the person. And I'm very observative when I'm talking to an athlete how they interact with the coaches, with the, how they interact with the teammates. Uh, it doesn't matter how good you are. If you're a bad apple, I'm not going to bring you. Yes, sir. Clear. Um, there's another question. What is the best NJCAA school to contact for recruitment? I think Coach Kiko will probably say Miami-Dade, so... <laughs> <laughs> Definitely Miami Day. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. You can contact any school. That's that's depending on where you want to go and which day, which area. So that's on you. And add it to that you can see a lot of so in terms of knowing the NJCA colleges and who's a part of the NJCAA, you can visit our website, njca.org. Um, again, njcaa.org. And you'd be able to learn about the association. You'd also find um, all of our member colleges and where they're listed there. Um, and then you can be able to kind of work that way to look up the schools yourself. And one of the students said it best, you know, what are you interested in? If you don't like the cold, well, you know, don't look at, um, you know, Northeast or don't look at uh, Michigan and Ohio. Um, if you're wanting to maybe travel to somewhere and you want a more rule designation a designation and you want more you don't want to be in a city there are those places if you want to be in the middle of a city there's a lot of those places as well but you'd have to start somewhere and then kind of look of what's interesting to you to play in the united states um I, somebody sent me a question as well in terms of what sports we offer again you can go to njca.org and you can see all the sport offerings that we have uh both men's and women's sports and be able to to see that information and those, again, are, are the sanctioned sports that the NJCA has. Um, and they, again, they range from baseball and softball to uh, men's and women's soccer, men's and women's basketball. Uh, we have wrestling. We've actually just started women's wrestling. We now have women's and men's volleyball. Men's volleyball is now an emerging sport of ours, beach volleyball, um, just to name a few. But again, you can go to our website, njcaa.org be able to see, start your search on colleges and our sports and to learn about the association as well. 
Excellent. Thank you, Brian. Um, and there's one final question here. Where to find the coaches? Is there a list? I wouldn't say there's a list. Again, on our website, you could start your search of finding the colleges. Um, and again, it's it, it's very simple to where, I mean, again, putting that work of you, when you see our colleges, then you're able to search their athletic programs and you can see all of their coaches. Again, you can see if you look up Miami-Dade Athletics um, and you'll be able to find Coach Kiko and his volleyball program. Um, but again, kind of start your search that way of, well, what am I interested in? What sports? Where do I want to play? Um, and to be able to, to start your search from there. Um, and again, njca.org is where we list all of our colleges, where you could look at that map again and know what regions, and you can look by states. Um, you'd be able to find on our website, when you look up a certain sport, you'd be able to click, there's a section that says teams, and you would see all the teams there that offer that sport. And you can also see them based on if, how they offer, if they're Division One, Division Two, or Division Three, And you'd be able to start your search there at njcaa.org. Okay, um, I believe that was it for today. There are no more questions. Um, I would like to thank everyone um, for joining us today, especially our panel, uh, Brian, Coach Kiko, Joshua, John Eichel, Anai, and Mikel. Thank you so much for being part of the panel. And of course, our regional um, offices support in the back. Mo, you did absolutely great. Thank you so much. And we hope to be continuing uh, follow-up sessions um, with this information, more maybe more in-depth towards looking at scholarships and other opportunities as well. Um, and now we can end the session. Thank you so much again for joining us today. Thank you very much.